if you want the ultimate high performance SUV that isn't a Lamborghini Urus, should you go for a Porsche Cayenne Turbo GT or an Aston Martin DBX 707? In this video, we're gonna find out. And this is the kind of decision that someone like Ronaldo has to make. Actually, he doesn't, does he? He can just buy both. Anyway, shut up. Buy, sell, car, wow. Let's start this video in the best way possible by launching these cars to compare their performance. So I'm going to time them 0 to 60 and over the standing quarter mile. I'm going to start with the Porsche Cayenne Turbo GT as it is the benchmark for SUV performance. Now it's powered by a four litre twin turbo V8. It puts out 640 horsepower, which is 90 horsepower more than the standard KN Turbo. It's got 850 newton meters of torque and it drives all four wheels by an eight speed automatic gearbox with launch control. So let's do this. Let's launch it. Oh man, this thing just hooks up. Whoa, it's nuts. Not 16, 3.14 seconds. The standing quarter mile, what we got, what we got? Whoa! 11.41 seconds. Whew. That's gonna to be tough for the Aston to beat. Now I've hopped into the Aston Martin. Can it beat that Porsche's time? It's gonna be really, really tough. So this car is powered by a Mercedes AMG sourced four litre twin turbo V8, and it uses the turbos of the MGT Black Series, and it's also had an ECU remap. That's why power goes from 550 horsepower in the standard DBX up to 707 horsepower in this, hence how it gets its name. It's also got 900 newton meters of torque, and it powers all four wheels for a nine-speed automatic gearbox with wet clutches and, importantly, launch control. Come on, what are you gonna do? Can you get anywhere near that mental Porsche? Oh, that's solid launch, that, that's really good. 0-60, 3.3 seconds. Bit behind the Porsche, but what are we gonna do over the quarter mile? There it is, 11.42 seconds. The Porsche goes off quicker, but then this seems to catch up. It's so close, isn't it? It's so close. Now let's compare these cars prices. So the K and Turbo GT starts from 150,000 pounds, which is quite a lot of money. And this one has an extra 6,000 pounds worth of options on it. So it comes to 156,000 pounds for this particular vehicle, though it's cheaper than the Aston Martin. The starting price of the DBX 707 is 190,000 pounds. And this one has 35,000 pounds worth of options on it. So the top price of the very car you see here, 225,000 pounds. Now, if you're thinking about changing your car, you might have to sell your current car. To do that, you should click on the pop-out banner up there or follow the link in the description below to go to CarWow to sell your car. You just upload some photos, give a brief description, and our dealers will bid on your car so you'll be able to find out how much it's really worth. Then if you want to accept one of the offers, just pick the highest one, obviously, and the dealer will come to your house, take the car away, and put the money straight into your account. It is dead easy and completely free. And 83% of people who sell their car through CarWow say they got their best price from CarWow. Now, if you want to do that at a later date, just simply Google Help Me Car Wow and we will help you change your car. Now, let's compare these cars' designs. The Aston DBX is the most sleek looking and let's boxy of all the SUVs. I like the design of it. But for this 707 version, they've spruced it up a bit. So you've got a more aggressive nose with a big front splitter, some vents, a larger grille. Also, on the bonnet, you've got some little fins in the bonnet vents. Moving down the side, you've got 22 inch alloy wheels as standard, though these are on the optional 23s. Speaking of which, this has an optional carbon upgrade pack on it. The 707 also gets some special sportier side skirts. And round the back, you're getting a large diffuser, larger quad exhaust pipes, a more pronounced integrated ducktail spoiler and a larger roof spoiler. Yeah, I think this is a good looking SUV. The Cayenne Turbo GT is based on a Cayenne Turbo Coupe, so it's got a slopier rear end than the standard Cayenne. They've made it look more aggressive with some bigger air intakes at the front. You've also got some 22 inch alloy wheels which come in this lovely gold. The roof is made out of carbon fibre, so too are the mirror caps and round the back you get a pronounced carbon fiber diffuser and that's all standard you don't have to pay extra for the carbon fiber on the porsche like you do the aston martin the best bit on this though has to be its twin titanium exhaust which are center mounted for the turbo gt look at the blue hue on them here on the inside of the turbo gt you have 
lovely build quality yes all feels very solid and it's just laid out super simple and easy to use like you expect from porsche all the controls here and the infotainment display simple clear and very very slick you get apple carplay and android auto as standard that brings you on to the digital driver's display which is digital apart from the rev counter which is analog and that just looks expensive now the turbo gt gets some upgrades over the standard turbo because look you get alcantara here 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 and on the steering wheel plus you get a center marker as well and your driving mode selector which is there so easy to get to when you want to just change mode like that then there's the seats you got these sports seats as standard it says turbo gt on it there you got turbo gt written there and on the dars and also on the kick plates it's good maybe a little dark and dour but really that's my only complaint the inside of the aston martin is more interesting for starters it's more colorful in fact you can choose some a wide range of colors and this has the two-tone with the uh, i don't know slightly odd blue on the seats now these sports seats are standard in the dbx 707 they're good comfy and hold in place now, i'm not sure if i'll go for this color it reminds me of like a diving wetsuit the 707 also gets extended carbon fiber shift paddles. The dash design is interesting. I used to like the fact that you had the buttons up there for the gear select, but actually it's a bit of a reach, not ideal. And this section here is just an absolute cluster compared to the simplicity of the Porsche. The DBX actually gets this extra section here, which has a new driving selector mode. It feels nice to turn, but it's not as handy as having it on the wheel, like in the Porsche, and the ability to actually separate the suspension out from the different driving mode, which is good, I like that, so you can have maximum attack, but soft suspension. The rest of the inside, well, it feels like you're sat in a expensive handbag, really. It's lovely, it's exquisite, and there's so many options for just upgrading it. Aston will let you spend a lot of money if you want to, for instance, by adding this carbon fiber here. What doesn't look so good, though, are the dials. I think this is a problem that luxury car manufacturers have, is that now that all dials are going digital, it's hard to make graphics look more expensive than your competitors. Whereas if it was analog, you just had like expensive metal in the dials, it's simple. Tell you what's not so simple, using the infotainment system. So it's Mercedes old infotainment system that Aston has to use. Ugh, and it's just not good. It really isn't. It puts me off this car Please a little. Repeat. Yeah, I'm sorry, love. Uh, you're just not great. And you put me off this car a little bit, especially as while you have Apple CarPlay, you don't have Android Auto. Why is that? Why? Hey? Function not possible with selected medium. See, you don't get a straight answer. That annoys me as well. Other than that though, I do really like sitting in this car. And one way where I feel it is better than the Porsche is just the view out the front. The dash seems lower, the visibility is better. It just feels so light and airy in here. I do like it. What I don't like though, is having a plane flying around above me ruining my piece of camera. Is it a dive bomber? Just like the normal Aston Martin DBX, the 707 uses active anti-roll bars to stop it leaning so much in the bends. It also has air suspension as standard. However, Aston Martin has tweaked it slightly, so made the damping a little bit more aggressive, and they've lowered the ride height by 20 millimeters. They've also altered the steering slightly and recalibrated it to make it more sporty, and done the same to the limited slip differential on the rear axle. Okay, let's see what this DBX 707 is like to drive. So I'm gonna turn the settings to Sport Plus for maximum attack, sharp throttle response, gear change, and firm suspension setting, and loudest exhaust. Oh my God, this engine has so much low down punch. Just catapults you out of the bends. It's utterly bonkers, and it sounds epic. <laughs> Whoa! Oh my gosh. I'm really surprised at how well this car just grips going round the bends. Look at that. Hardly leans at all, keeps completely flat. Hardly pushes wide either so much grip it's so easy to drive fast you don't think he's going to do it but you just chuck it into a bend and it somehow makes its way round right here look i thought i'd be just steering off over there into the grass but no it just hooked up and so does the engine <laughs> four-wheel drive system doing a great job of putting all that power down this is better than i expected yeah it seems on another level compared to the nord dbx that i drove before what they've done to this has just turned it into something properly special. Whoa! If you're getting an Aston Martin DBX, take my advice, spend the extra and get the 707. You won't be disappointed.
The Turbo GT uses the same chassis and air suspension as the normal KN Turbo. However, the car's been heavily worked on by Porsche's GT division. So they've recalibrated the suspension, made it sit 17 millimeters lower to the ground. They've fitted active anti-roll stabilization. They've fitted a limited slip differential on the rear axle. They've gone to work on it to make sure it's way more aggressive to drive. Okay then, KN Turbo GT, what you got? Well, okay, so the engine doesn't feel quite so punchy low down as the Aston Martins, but then the power builds. This is more revy, and the car itself, oh my gosh. <laughs> it's absolutely bloody nuts. Completely bonkers. Just seems unhinged. The Aston went around corners so well. This though, this is just like some utterly nuts sports car. Can't believe I'm in an SUV. And you can really tell what's going on beneath you. It moves around more than the Aston. It doesn't feel quite so planted, but I'm going quicker. I'm definitely going quicker. At least I feel I am. And that's really what matters. <laughs> and the way it hooks up, this is crazy. What the bloody hell has Porsche done? It really is just like a GT3 only an SUV. It's completely crazy. Oh my God, that Aston blew me away. This someday I'm done for now. As with the Aston, if you're getting a Porsche Cayenne Turbo, get this one, pay the extra for the Cayenne Turbo GT. Now let's have a listen to what noise you can make with these cars when you rev them at a standstill. Let's do the Aston Martin first. Okay, I sense a soft limiter. There's potential though. Right, cut the engine. Right, let's hear the Porsche Cayenne Turbo GT. Oh, another soft limiter. What? <laughs> Stop! Why is the world coming to? All these bloody soft limiters just ruining performance cars. Anyway, which do you think sounded the best? Let me know by voting in the pinned comment. The Turbo GT gets common ceramic brakes as standard. You've got 440 millimeter discs up front, gripped by 10 piston calipers. At the rear, you've got 410 millimeter discs, gripped by four piston calipers. The weight of this car is 2,220 kilos, which is 20 kilos more than the standard KN Turbo because of those extra mechanical bits to improve the drive. Shall we see how well this Porsche actually brakes out in the real world? To do that, I'm gonna do an emergency stop from 60 miles an hour. Got to say the brakes on this car are lovely. They feel great, they're really strong. Maybe a little bit grabby at slower speeds, but other than that, ace. Anyway, let's do this emergency stop. Let's see how quickly it can come to a complete standstill. 60, there we go. Oh, hey. Yes. Porsche brakes never let you down. 30 meters to stop from 60 miles an hour. That's gonna be so hard for the Aston to beat. The DBX707 also comes with common ceramic brakes as standard, but they're slightly smaller than on the Porsche. So you have 420 millimeter discs up front, gripped by six piston calipers, whereas at the rear you've got 390 millimeter discs, gripped by a single piston caliper. This car is also slightly heavier than the Porsche as well. It weighs in at 2,245 kilos. Now I'm gonna do a brake test in the Aston Martin. Can it beat the Porsche? I'll tell you what, the brakes in this car are lovely. Very, very strong, also progressive, lots of feel to them, but let's see what happens when I do an emergency stop from 60 miles an hour. Here we go to 60. There we go. Blimey, this just stands on its nose. What was the distance? That stopped in 29 meters, shorter by one meter than the Porsche. And Porsches are just known for having fabulous brakes. Yeah, they're epic on this car. Absolutely epic. The DBX is Aston Martin's most practical car, though that's not saying much. However, this DBX 707 has to be the most practical high-performance SUV. I mean, look how much space I've got. Loads of knee room. Headroom's really good as well. It feels nice and spacious in here. Help with the fact this one's got lovely full-length glass roof. All the luxury leather that you get in the front extends back here. It's so posh. In fact, you can tell how posh it is just by the bolters on these seat backs. I mean, look at that. So expensive feeling. I feel special sitting in the back of this. I feel even more special driving it, but still, great car to be chauffeured in. Here in the back of the Turbo GT, there's plenty of knee room. Headroom is not as good as in the Aston though. Hmm. What's also not so good is that you can't get a third passenger in here because you have this train instead. 
bit of a shame because these seats are nice with the Alcantara on them, like in the front and the Turbo GT. So it does feel expensive, though not as expensive as the Aston. And this folder on the seat back does illustrate that. So it's nice compared to other cars, it's expensive and it's actually more practical than the Aston, but it just doesn't feel as special. Hmm. What I'm also missing is that full length glass roof. Obviously you can't have it fitted to this car because you've got a carbon roof instead, which does help lower the center of gravity for improved handling. But if you're a rear passenger, it just feels nicer and more spacious in that Aston Martin because you've got more glass. Anyway, should we do something a little less sensible? Now let's see what this Porsche is like if you want to hoon around and do some skids. So. Oh, it's just nuts. I can just feel the tyres just chewing away at the tarmac. Oh, now we've got someone to stay. Oh, can I bring it back? Here we go. Surprisingly easy. <laughs> That's enough of that. I just feel so sorry for the tyres. Oh, it doesn't feel right. It's just like clawing at the tarmac and there. But it sort of does it. Let's see how easy this car is to slide with the stability off, so. Actually, not too bad, really. So if we can go the other way, come on. That was quite good fun, this is. That was good fun, I enjoyed that. Now let's compare these cars' boot capacities. So here in the KN, I've got 549 litres of space. There is a bit of a load lift to lift things over. In fact, I'm too much of a diva now to be bothered to lift myself over it. So I'm gonna need some help. Come on, guys. Let's move on to the Aston DBX's boot. So that capacity is 638 litres and there's no load lift. So look how easily they were just able to slide me in here. Yes, it's definitely roomier, plusher. Yeah, I like this. I've already established that this car is completely bonkers when you want to hoon it about. Let's go into comfort mode now. What's it like? It's telling me to go faster. I just want to go quicker. Yeah, the suspension's slackened off and it feels more comfortable. It doesn't seem to isolate me quite as well from the bumps as the Aston Martin did. And there's something about holding onto an Alcantara steering wheel which makes you just want to go quicker. They're not relaxing, they make you think you're in a racing car. Try and relax. This car doesn't want me to relax. It's not terrible, I'm not uncomfortable, it's not noisy. There's just something in the way it's set up that I feel like I'm wasting it, driving it like this. It just provokes you. I want to go quick in it, I'm bored of going slow in it. It's not that kind of car. Probably could if you had to, but no, it's a waste. Watch out, squirrel. <sighs> that squirrel almost took the very long chill out session, the indefinite one. <laughs> I don't think it's good for your heart rate, this car. I really don't. <laughs> it just gets your blood pumping. Now let's see what the Aston is like as a daily driver. So I've got into GT mode, so it's slackened off the suspension, made it more relaxing. And there's a bigger range between the sporty setting and the softer settings in this particular car compared to the Porsche. It doesn't seem to be goading me anymore to go quicker. It's just happy to sit back, relax, and let me just enjoy the boutique interior, the great visibility, the smell of the leather. But obviously if I want to go quicker, I just put my foot down and it will respond. Though do you know what? I don't want to. I just want to relax. This is a good car for just cruising around in. I would like this as a daily if I could afford it. Totally a split personality car. You can have the manic, the mental, the mayhem, but also the mellow. So then what's my final verdict? Well, it's really, really hard to split these two cars. They are the very best high performance SUVs you can buy. This KN Turbo GT is just nuts. It's like a big beefed up rally car. The way it goes down a twisty road, it will just rearrange your brain and it's always on it, really focused. This is not quite so in your face, but when you wanna have some fun, it will still deliver. Do you know what, it comes down to this. If I was to have a car for a week to have some fun with, I'll pick that. A car to daily drive every day, I'd pick this because it has a slightly broader breadth of ability. And that's why the Aston Martin wins this test. Just. I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a like. Let me know what you think of my verdict in the comments below. Click on those windows there to see some more videos and on that box there to go to CarWow to sell your car. You'll be able to find out how much it's really worth. It's completely free.